Okay, going to make a boiling dairy wine. Um, basically, because I'm not too keen on grape wines, so I thought fruit wine would be quite interesting. Um, so, right, ingredients that we're going to need in the wine. Uh, right, so we're going to need about 2 kgs of boiling berries, which I've got here. And uh, we come over here, I've actually got a few more little tubs of this stuff here. Um, I think right there is probably about 2 kgs, but we'll see because um, there's actually quite a lot of ice frost on it. Um, so who knows what's happened there. Um, probably can chuck in a bit more for flavour if we need to. Um, anyway, what's next? So other than that, then we're going to need sugar. I've got um, some dextrose, which I got from Binnan, which is where I buy kind of um, maybe a quarter of my homebrew stuff. Um, the other stuff I get from a guy at work. Um, what else we got? We need some citric acid, which I've got here. Um, I've also got a few more uh, boysenberries here, just some canned uh, whole boysenberries. Um, kind of like fruit salad type stuff, but I don't know, I might crack it open and have a look at it. Maybe I'll put it in, maybe I won't. Um, uh, what else we've got? We've got um, some wine yeast. Uh, picked this up from Binnan as well, $2.90. It's about 10 grams, which treats 20 litres of wine. Um, we're only doing a uh, gallon of wine. As you can see here I've got the carboy here. Um, that has got um, that's got some cleaning product in it at the moment. That's just sort of cleaning. I uh, gave that a shake earlier on. Um, uh, also in the brew uh, we've got to add uh, a pectin killing uh, enzyme. In this case I've got uh, what's it called? Pectinase and it was 590 from Binnan as well. Um, so the pectin killing enzy enzyme is um, uh, actually quite a big one in the uh, wines, the fruit wines. Um, uh, so basically what happens is the pectinizers are added to the must before fermentation, um, are marked under various branded names such as uh, pectolase, Pectinol, pectozyme, um, they kind of inhibit the action of the yeast and so, yeah, pretty much wait at least 24 hours before adding the yeast. Um, radio, so, uh, also, what have we got? We've got some Kempton tablets, there was a 390 from Benin as well. And if we have a look over here in the old trusty uh, wine homebrew book, um, it says here it's a multi purpose tablet used for the sterilization of equipment, um, inhibiting uh, mold growth in the must and as a preservative to finished wines. Um, Campton tablets do add a taste to wine but this wears off of ageing, so that's quite cool. Um, the active ingredient is sodium metabisulfate, uh, which is also obtainable in powder form. Uh, and maybe marketed under other names. Um, so Campton tablets inhibit the action of yeast as well, so you've got to wait 24 hours before adding the yeast with that. Um, so, yep, that's another bit that's going into the wine. Um, also, uh, another thing we need to add is uh, tannin, which we can find through um, just uh, tea, uh, apparently. I looked this up earlier on. Um, so tannin uh, is also a necessary ingredient of wine. Without it, wines which are normally slightly astringent taste insipid. Um, too much tannin, on the other hand, makes the wine too astringent. Uh, it is present in some fruits and leaves and in all grape juices. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently you can just use a teaspoon of tea and um, that will uh, be enough to, to bring forth uh, the tannin that's required. Um, so anyway, so let's have a look at some of the um, brewing equipment. So then we've got the carboy here, uh, that's a gallon. I actually filled it up with water and um, found that that was about 
There's five or six litres and um, here we've got the brewing pot, um, pretty much for boiling um, and storing stuff overnight. Um, got the old trusty uh, spoon there for stirring and a hydrometer um, which I'll be using um, once the, the water or um, the mixture is cooled down a bit just to take a reading and, and just try and work out how much um, sugar we're going to need to add and, and how much alcohol is going to be in there. Um, I guess I'll probably aim for, I don't know, maybe, maybe about 10% alcohol, nothing too high, certainly nothing over 14, it's getting a bit, a bit strange. Um, what else we got? Um, yeah, just in case I actually got some uh, finings, um, say beer finings, but I don't know, we'll see how that goes, whether I'll need it or not. Um, I'm assuming I'm not going to need the finings because um, uh, apparently you've got to rack off the wine a few times, so that'll sort that out. Cool, so yeah, that's pretty much all the ingredients and a bit of what's going to be happening. Um, Next up, I'll probably get into the uh, actual steps in making it. Okay, so let's get out some of those and got some more fruit from the bag in the box there. Um, you can actually just buy bags from the supermarket, so it's not really hard to get your hands on the sort of fruit that we're using here. Um, but, um, anyway, so so what we did was um, the gave the fruit a bit of a wash in the sink. Um, some of these uh, uh, tubs were actually quite mushy um, so I didn't wash that fruit um, but rather sort of looked through and picked out some of the stems and stuff. Um, and then on to the next step pretty much was to um, pop the fruit into the uh, boiling tub just here. There you go. See that. Um, and add a couple of litres of water um, and the next step is to uh, pretty much just pop it on there and get it boiling. Um, and once it boils, we're just going to simmer it for about 20 minutes. So, um, yeah, let's get that sorted.